This is NDTV and you are watching NDTV Prime. Christie's is the largest auction house in the world. Wonderful Monet Haystack here from 1891. Its auctions are major, star-studded events where history so often is made, raking in hundreds of millions of dollars at their New York, London, and Hong Kong sales. And this auction house has heavily impacted the monetary value of Indian art. So Last year, the house fetched 98 crore rupees at its India sale, shattering world records. Auctions are funny things with their own language and rituals. For example, artworks are called lots, and a hammer price is the final price determined through the auction. Earlier this year, I met William Robinson, international head of art, and he taught me how to be an auctioneer, perhaps the most daunting and bravado-filled job in the room. We'll start me on this, seven and a half, eight, eight and a half lakh, eight and a half, eight and a half, nine lakh, nine lakh, yours at the back, sir. It's yours at the back, nine and a half. Going on, sir? Ten lakh. We meet Christie's International Director of Asian Art ahead of their 2016 India sales to discuss demonetization, India's stringent antiquity laws, and Christie's first auction of Indian works 250 years ago. International Director of Asian Art. What does that mean and what is an average day like for you? Well, I would say that there no, uh, there's no such thing as the same day twice. You know, it, at Christie's, I mean, one, that's one of the great thrills and I would say one of the great perks of the job is that every day is exciting and different. It can be um, looking at a masterpiece with a colleague, something's just come in. It could be dealing with a client about an upcoming sale, traveling across the world to see an exhibition, to uh, be involved in a preview such as I am here in uh, Delhi today. It could be a day spent doing research, going out to see a collection. Uh, it's all totally varied. And unlike my museum work in which you have a static collection every day in the same galleries, at Christie's in King Street where I work, every week you come down and you know it's different. Now Christie's is celebrating a major anniversary this year. Can you tell me about it? Yes, we've been in business for 250 years. James Christie, who was a real London character in the mid 18th century, opened his doors in 1766. He was selling Indian art from the very first year of his business. He was selling Indian miniatures. And he sold a suite of Indian ivory furniture uh, very early on in his career to uh, Queen Charlotte, George III's wife. And it still remains in Buckingham Palace, very close to where Christie's is. So we've been in business um, engaging with India for 250 years now. It's a very, very big deal for us. I think for any company to have been in successful motion for that long. And the market is constantly changing and evolving and I think our success has been to anticipate changes in taste and to grow with those changes in taste. Now, before when you were writing books as an art historian, are you really thinking, now I don't want to just tell the stories of these works, I maybe want to change their narrative in the future by selling them, getting them to sell for more, or change where they're located. What kind of led to that shift for you from going from museums to working at Christie's? Well, I still love public art and I love, you know, I'm kind of deeply committed to museums. But of course, when you work in an institution, a lot of your, your daily experience is that of interpretation. You're writing, you're interpreting, you're displaying for the public. And at the time that I was approached to join Christie's, it was 2007. So every week in the FT, there'd be a big article about India. And you'd always hear about the Indian auctions and, you know, Indians making big news in the world. And I had the chance to actually be involved in making art history in India. I had a very conscious sense of, with my museum background and art history background, you know, to be able to come to India to work with great collectors who are building museums and institutions, forming incredible collections, people who are curious, who want relationships with scholars, academics, institutions in the West. And uh, th that opportunity was too good to resist. So 2007 was a sort of champion year for the Indian art market, and that's <laughs> when you entered at Christie's. Uh, can you talk about what the landscape was like when you entered and what it's like now? 
Uh, when I entered in 2007, it was an extremely hot market. Uh, you know, the prices were just going through the roof for contemporary artists. Subodh Gupta and the Venice Biennale two seasons ago had had a kind of amazing platform on the, on the, at the uh, Francois Pinault Palazzo Grassi Museum, uh, Bharti Atul, all of these names had become kind of household global names for people interested in contemporary art. Um, the auction scene was absolutely going crazy. It was really a hot moment. And uh, since then, of course, we've had various big changes in the world. We've had financial changes. But what we have seen that's been extraordinary on a very, very positive front is we've seen the maturing of the Indian market, not just the market, but the art scene. How? Uh, the emergence of a world-class Biennale, Kochi Museris Biennale, the development of the India Art Fair, which has become a seminal convening moment in India where many people come from abroad, where we have great gallery shows in Delhi and in Mumbai. The Baudaji Lad Museum under Tasneem Mehta moving from being a rather antiquated, fusty, old, undervisited place to all of a sudden a hot Another Victorian Albert. Art. The original Victorian Albert Museum. Kira Nather and her Museum of Art putting together world-class shows on Indian artists, some of whom are not yet as well recognized as they should be. Devi Art Foundation with Lekhan Anupam Podhar. And then global representation for Indian art at the Guggenheim with Zarina and Gaitonde at um, MoMA through the acquisition of great works by great contemporary artists at the Met recently with the Nasreen Mohammadi show at the Serpentine with the Indian Highway show the BNA had a Hussein show Tate had a Souza show you know these are very major things pathbreaking and all of this has happened in the last few years in addition to record prices for all the moderns so it's post recession as it were where we've seen the you know the stellar prices for Gaitonde Tayeb Souza, Raza, and Hussein. You are seeing those modern masters mushroom in museums worldwide. And tell me what the influence is of, say, this Bhupen Kakar show at the Tate Modern on a Christie's auction. The impact of a museum show on demand and on prices is extraordinary. Because when a major exhibition like the Bhupen show opens at a place like Tate, which is one of the most visited museums in the world, even if people arrive at Tate not knowing who Bhupen Kakar is, when they leave, they know who he is. And so um, art acquisition in the market relies very largely on exposure and understanding. So once somebody has been through the trajectory of Bupin's career, um, they come out understanding him. When a work comes up for sale, they recognize him. So it's the broadening of the market. And Bupin is an Indian artist who was recognized at Tate. But we have to remember that Tate exhibitions have transformed the market for Richter, for Damien Hirst, for Miro, right now for Georgia O'Keeffe, you know, any major retrospective show is going to open up audiences and those audiences then in turn, you know, help to bring the prices up, help to bring demand up, which helps to bring the prices up. Christie's has two auctions coming up. Can you tell me about the two of them? Absolutely. Uh, they're on uh, the 18th of December in Mumbai at the Taj Mahal Palace Hotel. It's our fourth India sale. It's the fourth time we're having sales in India. Christie's has been dealing with India for 250 years. James Christie in his first auction in 1766 was selling Indian miniature paintings. We've had an office here since 1994. We've had a strong presence here. We've got a huge global Indian team. But this is the fourth year that we're actually selling in India. And there are two sales, one dedicated to Indian modern art, uh, in which we have the big names, the two Gaitondes, the big Taya, Bhupen, etc., etc. And then we have a sale devoted to classical art which is miniature painting, stone and bronze sculpture. And this is a really important market. Uh, it's, uh, you know, with the prices of modern art having risen so substantially, people who are interested in, in the visual arts of South Asia are beginning to step back and say, hang on, look at the amazing value that exists for Indian antiquities. These are things that have sometimes lasted millennia, you know, that have stood the test of time, that have originality, authenticity, that really reflect the narrative culture of, of India, and yet available relatively reasonably when you compare it with a, with a modern master. And I think with our platform, uh, for the first time, you have buyers in India who have a very transparent understanding of these objects in terms of attributions, authenticity, value, and of course, access to our network of experts. So, you know, if you like something in the catalog, you just have to send an email, and you get an answer from an expert who's able to give you context and value and, and you know understanding. No doubt when it comes to classical things that require scholarship. 
Now, is that an obstacle to sales? Uh, I don't see it as an obstacle, I see it as an opportunity. You know, when you look at a contemporary work of art, because it reflects our times, it's relatively easy for us to read. But when it's something that was made for 16th century viewer or 12th century viewer, we have to get into the mind of those people, the audience of the time. We have to understand the symbolism, the materials, the iconography, the techniques, the context for production. But, you know, that acquiring that knowledge is a wonderful journey.